Oh boy, another iceberg. Well, calm down, officer. For once in my life, I promise that I'm not the main center of attention. If you clicked on this video with no prior knowledge of my existence, let me relieve you of your stress. It's not the acid, shrooms, or funny poppy pills that you know on a first name basis that's causing you to see this sarcastic hunk of ass. I'm Dr. Skipper, and this is the Commentary Iceberg. But before the video starts, please subscribe and psych bitch. If you can't tell, I'm mommy special snowflake when it comes to commentary and not a lawyer on Wall Street. If you want to verify this claim, you could check my bank account. You'll find enough dust bunnies that would even make Utah jealous. But for real, I recommend you watch the whole video and then conclude your mind. An iceberg is a chart compiled of fun facts and theories that go from most common knowledge to least common knowledge. And the chart that's going to be covered today is from a content creator named Pie Man. His channel will be down in the description. My apologies, by the way. I understand that we probably aren't on a first name basis yet, but allow me to elaborate more on what you're watching. Depending on your age, you might remember a golden age where surfing and bullying thrived. Well, surprise, like a cockroach that refused to die, this community still stands. As a child, I made commentary videos, but currently I'm an adult with the same child mindset who's in way over his head. So I put my thinking cap and came to a solution. What if I found some people in the commentary community with more seniority and involvement to talk about the cardboard box they call a home? But for real, I got some friends to talk about their own community. And some of the people on this iceberg don't even have a thousand subscribers. So if you watch their part and like what you see, check out their channels. It will really help them. Also, icebergs are more ear candy than flashy visuals at the end of the day. So I recommend you go for a walk, clean your room, or fall asleep to my crisp audio. You might think that's pretentious, but I don't really care. Just kidding. I kind of care. With that, I'll go to the first layer. Content Cop. Content Cop is a series created by iDubs. The series involves critiquing a specific YouTuber's content as well as their behavior online. There was no schedule to Content Cop, but with every new episode, it sparked controversy towards an individual he would target. Normally, after a Content Cop video was released, the creator would lose a significant amount of subscribers and their dislike ratio would increase. As of November 2020, there has been 11 episodes of Content Cop. Busting Jinx Reload, Amateur Food Reviewers, Toy Review Channel's Giant Surprise Egg, Fine Bros in the Revenue Machine, Keemstar, Toy Review 2, Giant Gummy Bottle, How to Prank It Up, Leafy is Here, Tech Destruction Channels, Tana Mongu, and Rice Gum. Keemstar, N Word. In 2008, Keemstar was a moderator on BattleCam.com and got into an argument with another moderator by the username Alex. The argument started due to Alex featuring Keemstar on the front page of BattleCam, and users on the site started to notice it. Apparently, more users recognized Keemstar as a moderator than Alex, so he thought Keemstar was being selfish and putting himself on the website. Although, in reality, it was Alex. Now, it's unknown if Alex did this to anger Keemstar, who's doing it because he thought he was being nice and giving more positive recognition on the site. In response, Keemstar went on blog TV with his fucking hands up and called, uh, he called Keemstar a Cutie Pie vs. T-Series. This is also known as the Great Subscriber War. This was a YouTube conflict between PewDiePie and T-Series to be the most subscribed channel on YouTube and the first to hit 100 million subs. This lasted from August 29th, 2018 to April 28th, 2019. The first adpocalypse. So this involves PewDiePie doing some no-no thingies in videos. And this led Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper, Johnson & Johnson, and major brands pulling out their advertisements on YouTube. And to fuel a certain adpocalypse, you might remember a certain moment on a certain bridge. Leafy Band. On August 21st, 2020, Leafy was banned. The termination had due to harassment with him making multiple Pokemon videos. There's speculation that H3H3 H3 had parts to do with this, but it's not fully known. Sir Tony Ray. On January 2016, Tony was the main subject of harassment after Keemstar falsely accused him of being a convicted pedophile. Turned out he got the wrong guy and Tony got raided. However, he also gained a large number of supporters following the incident. Memegate. All right, folks, this is a long one, so I'm just gonna put some nice little Minecraft footage while I read out the whole thing. So Leafy was called out by H3H3 after his community attacked Tommy NC2010, who was autistic. H3H3 would make a video called the Leafy Rant on March 20th, 2016. Within the video, he called him cancerous. Later, Leafy would make a video called the H3H3 Productions Rant, where he'd call H3H3 a massive hypocrite. This also involved situations where they were both shit-talking Pyro. Pyro also made a video saying he didn't want to take any sides and that he moved past it. Pyro's cynical grooming allegations. So I guess I'll give a quick little rundown of it. So accusations came that Pyrocynical groomed a 15 year old boy named Ivory. And then a whole thing went down. On December 1st, 2020, Turkey Tom released a video. This is still pretty fresh and new, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but you could look into it. Paul Brother videos. Yeah. In 2016, people made a shitload of videos and a shitload of money on the Paul Brothers. That's pretty much it. Lion Maker. So Lion Maker was a pedophile YouTuber. On September 19th, 2015, Drama Alert had an interview with the parent, which exposed Lion Maker for trying to get nude images from the parents' underage child. After all of this, on March 7th, 2016, a fellow British YouTuber named Colossal is Crazy exposed Lion Maker for being a pedophile, which had communication with underage fans. Colossal also explained that Lion Maker is a master manipulator towards underage kids and that he knows how to interact to get their nudes. On November 6th, 2016, Lion Maker ended up on Colossal is Crazy's podcast. 
just defending himself to which he failed. Despite people hating on his videos, Lion Maker's YouTube channel continued to gain subscribers. In December 2018, Paige the Panda uploaded a video to her personal channel explaining her side of the controversy and her experience with Lion Maker. On September 29th, 2020, Lion Maker's channel was terminated due to violating YouTube's terms of service. Slazo situation. Ah, uh, this is kind of like the pyro situation as well. So these are accusations that Slazo was manipulative and sexually abusive. This situation had a bunch of Slazo's friends turning on him for him later to be found innocent. I recommend you look more into this yourself. H3 H3 versus Keemstar. This has to go back of a feud between H3 versus Keemstar. So H3 H3 dropped a content nuke which outlined the entirety of Keemstar's controversies, which then led to him to lose sponsors, which then led Keemstar to fire back to H3 which then made him lose sponsors as well. It was just a back and forth feud which kind of did nothing but make both lose. French girl interview. Going back to the pyrocynical thing, there's supposed to be this little French girl interview with some 14 year old French chick, who was then 13, who was then 15, the age just kept flipping. That was released lately, and yeah. So that was the first layer of the iceberg. If there's anything you want to correct me on or anything you want to tell me, please tell me down below. With that, there's going to be a bunch of other icebergs from now on. Every content creator you see, if you like their stuff, please check them out. I'll see you at the end of this iceberg though, and right now I'll hand this off to the beak. Right, my name's The Beak and I'm going to be discussing the second layer of this iceberg. Now, look, I could spend a million years describing why you should come and watch my content and why I make the best content on YouTube, but I'm not going to do that. Basically, my channel is really close to hitting 20,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy what I have to say and want to see more content from me, be sure to come have a look. There's an individual, around the same age as me, who lives in infamy on YouTube. Now, if you don't recognize him by his interesting content, I'm pretty sure you'll recognize him by his signature I've been smoking for around 50 years voice. Morgs. Now, Morgs, he's a guy who's come under fire quite a bit on YouTube for a multitude of things. One of those things being Morgs Fest. Yes, on the 1st of September 2019, our favourite British commentary creator Morgs decided to host his own event. You see, the thing is though, if you were another content creator, yeah, you probably wouldn't have gotten in. I don't know why this was the case, but content creators like Pyrocynical, Will N E, and many more, yeah, they weren't allowed in. In a Cold Ones interview, Pyrocynical describes his experience at Morgsfest and why he wasn't let in. He himself doesn't even really know. I don't know, maybe Morgs was embarrassed or scared of these other content creators stealing the limelight. I guess the only person who truly knows is Morgs himself. Speaking of Morgs, yeah, he's not the only YouTuber in his family. No, there's another person in Morgs' videos that also makes content. His mum. Now, Morgs' mum, yeah, she's pretty much a Morgs clone when it comes to YouTube, and her channel only really serves as a method of adding to the already established law of the Morgs coalition. One of the main things Morgs' mum is known for is the beef she had with fellow content creator Will N E. This beef surrounded who would overtake who in subscriber count. Now, if I was Will and E, I obviously wouldn't want someone else's mum having more subscribers than me. So in order to sway the odds in his favour, Desperate Times called for desperate measures. He appealed to his fans. He created a propaganda empire rivaled only by the Soviet Union. It was quite a heated affair, and for a while, Morgz's mum did overtake him. But this only lasted a short while. No, if you have a look at their subscriber counts now, we can see that Willany is far ahead of Morgz's mum. A few moments ago, I mentioned a guy called Pyrocynical. Yeah, he hasn't only had beef with Morgz. Nah, if you've been following up on Pyro's antics as of late, I'm sure the name Turkey Tom rings a bell. By this point, you probably know about the whole Pyrocynical situation, so I'm not gonna go into depth. In this entire situation, there was one individual who was responsible for swaying the overall opinion of the entire situation. This individual was Turkey Tom. Yes, Turkey Tom was the individual who created the fabled Google Docs surrounding Pyrocynical, which outlined how Pyro was guilty of the things he was being accused of. When Tom first released his video on Pyrocynical, they were met with quite a bit of support, which also led to some members of the commentary community completely doing a 180 on how they 
reviewed the entire situation because Pyro Cynical Guilty now lol. This Google document was filled with a ton of damning evidence regarding Pyro's guilt. So when Pyro eventually responded, of course he was going to have to bring it all up and talk about it. Not only did Pyro Cynical seemingly refute the claims in the document, he also took all the support Turkey Tom was receiving and morphed it into animosity. So much so that Tom had to take a break from YouTube and the internet for about a month. The thing with Pyro Cynical though is that he can't really seem to catch a break because there's yet another person who is seemingly out to get him too. Everybody's favourite gnome Keemstar. Now Keem, his beef with Pyro goes way back, like all the way back to 2016. Back in 2016, Pyro and Keemstar were having a bit of a Twitter spat about god knows what. Pyro Cynical tweeted out this picture involving Keemstar, which led to Keemstar doing something absolutely mental. Instead of laughing it off or responding with his own meme, no Keemstar, he responded with this picture. A picture of Pyro Cynical. Here's the thing, at the time of this beef, Pyro was yet to show his face online. Keemstar was responsible for Pyro Cynical's face reveal. When it comes to Keemstar, yeah, he can't really shy away from drama online and always finds himself involved in it one way or another. Another person he had beef with is a sort of internet enigma. The god tier prankster and egg connoisseur. FoosyTube. Now, I'm pretty sure we all know who FoosyTube is. I mean, he was one of the biggest pranksters on YouTube a few years ago. Pranksters in quotation marks, because most of his pranks were fake. So, I'm not going to discuss the rise and fall of the FoosyTube YouTube empire, mainly because it would take about 24 years. He was a prankster on YouTube. His golden years were like 2014, so of course his channel would be pretty dead in 2020. The story of FoosyTube isn't all sunshine and rainbows, though. No, even though FoosyTube's channel was doing incredibly well. The man himself, yeah, he wasn't really in an okay state of mind in the later stages of his career. July 15th, a date synonymous with FoosyTube's YouTube career, and not for a good reason. On July 15th, FoosyTube held an event called Hate Dies, Love Arrives. According to FoosyTube, this event was meant to be the next Coachella, but instead of being the next Coachella, it actually only served as an insight into his declining mental health at the time. Look, I am by no means an expert in mental health, so I'm not going to sit here and try to diagnose him with anything. But it was pretty bloody clear to see that he wasn't really in the right state of mind. This event was a disaster. A disaster which only served as another nail in the coffin in the once great FoosyTube YouTube empire. Since we're talking about things related to Keemstar, we also need to talk about The Baited Podcast. The Baited Podcast was a podcast hosted by Keemstar, Colossal is Crazy, and Anything for Views. On this podcast they spoke about quite a few different topics regarding YouTube and some YouTube creators, some controversial, some not. As the age-old saying goes though, all good things, yeah they have to come to an end eventually. And this was the case for The Baited Podcast. Unfortunately though, it seemed like this podcast ended in a bit of a bad way, mainly surrounding income and stuff along those lines. But for a while, it was quite the talking point online. Since we're talking about Keemstar, here's another interesting fact about him. Now, I don't know how true this is because the evidence is kinda shaky, but if it is true, it's rather bloody frightening. Many years ago, around 2011, an incredibly damning Xbox 360 party chat recording surfaced. Now, in this clip, you can apparently hear Keemstar getting into an altercation with his girlfriend at the time. I'm not going to play the clip here because it's honestly just quite disturbing. So if you really want to go and have a look, be sure to find that video. But at the end of this section, I just want to reiterate that I don't know if this is 100% true. So I'm not going to say that this 100% happened without a doubt. Because as I just said a few seconds ago, yeah, the evidence is quite shaky. Damn, alright, I think it's time we move off of the heavy topics. Twitch! versus YouTube, a battle that has been going on for millennia. In the one corner you have the video sharing platform with some streaming elements, YouTube, and on the other you have the streaming website Twitch. There have been quite a few debates between individuals on both sides, as in what style of content is harder to create, etc. 
Now, considering I am a YouTuber, of course I would be biased towards the YouTube side of the argument, considering I don't really think sitting at a screen eating noodles and saying nothing while watching a funny haha meme compilation takes much effort. But then again, you do get the streamers who really put in a lot of effort into their craft. I'd be naive to disregard the fact that continuously entertaining people for hours at a time must take a hell of a lot out of you. But you know, YouTube superiority and all that. At the end of the day, in my opinion, I think it's just different strokes for different folks really. Wanna watch a live playthrough of a video game or gawk at a woman's area? Maybe Twitch would tickle your fancy. If you wanna watch stuff like more edited fontages, commentary videos, video essays, then YouTube is the place you want to be. As I mentioned earlier, I am a YouTuber. And as a YouTuber, there's one thing I fear. One thing that keeps me awake at night and, in the few moments sleep does overcome me, haunts my nightmares. Strikes. These bastards will scare the living daylights out of you. This tale from the internet surrounds two creators. A guy called Just Destiny and a guy called Lieutenant Cobra. A few years ago, Just Destiny was making a few videos about those cringy kids who exploit their videos online for views and money. Though these videos, yeah, they were really clickbait. Since this clickbait was a tiny bit odd, a creator known as Lieutenant Cobra called him out in his own video. There's a bit of a rule when it comes to being a commentary YouTuber on YouTube. This rule being that if you're a commentary YouTuber, you have to be able to take criticism, considering that, you know, we are giving out our own criticism. After Lieutenant Cobra's video came out, did Destiny simply take it on the chin and move forward, or did he change up his content? No. He copyright striked Lieutenant Cobra's video. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah, he got his attorneys involved. Just Destiny sent Lieutenant Cobra a cease and desist letter. So instead of just taking the criticism on the chin, nah, he was gonna threaten to sue a child. I don't really know why us YouTubers love to threaten legal action against other creators. But if we're gonna talk legal action, we need to talk about, possibly, the biggest YouTube legal case ever. H3H3 Productions used to be a YouTube juggernaut. In his heyday, H3H3 made quite a few bangers that carried a lot of weight behind them. One of these videos was about a guy called Matt Hoss. In the video H3 made on him, he basically pulled the piss out of Matt and said that Matt's videos just weren't that good in general. Matt. Yeah, he wasn't a happy sausage after this, but instead of taking it on the chin, no, Matt took H3 to court. This was a battle of fair use, as Matt, the plaintiff, declared that H3 had infringed on his copyright by using his clips in the video critiquing him. A legal crusade ensued. A crusade that led to an Ethan Klein victory. Ethan Klein was heralded as the hero of fair use. Would be nice if he was like that today. Speaking of Ethan Klein, let's talk about something that he may, big emphasis on the may, have been involved in. The outright termination of Leafy is here. Now, Leafy, he doesn't really really need an introduction. When Leafy was banned, it caused quite a stir online. The thing that made Leafy's ban so odd was because he wasn't banned in the usual way. No, instead of getting three strikes, he was instantly terminated. This led to many questions. Why? Why was Leafy banned like this? And the most important one, was Ethan Klein involved? Leafy and Ethan had had a rocky relationship in the past. And Ethan is, apparently, quite close with Susan Wojcicki and her YouTube team. No one really has a straight answer. So this, all it's become is one of those very strange internet conspiracy theories. Here's another interesting conspiracy that was going around a few weeks ago. Who was the 12 year old that hacked John Swan's Discord account? Yeah, we're talking about John Swan vs Dream. Quite recently, one of the biggest creators on YouTube got involved in the little bit of a Twitter argument with one of the commentary community's most beloved creators. This situation started when Dream decided to share something on Reddit outlining how John Swan was a bad guy. Dream was saying this because he had received some quite interesting DMs on Discord from a guy called John Swan. Considering that Dream is a huge creator, John Swan declared that it was just Dream fabricating a story to discredit another, smaller creator. After this, 
A war ensued. Twitter debates, detective streams, it was absolutely mental. Here's the thing with this story though. Dream was right. John Swan lied about the entire situation, and he weaponized an entire community to fight his battle for him. After this information came out, John posted an apology that wasn't really received well, and has since vanished from the internet. And with that, the second layer of this iceberg has come to an end. Once again, I just want to say that if you enjoyed what I had to say and want to see some more content from me, definitely come have a look at my channel because it would really mean a lot. I hope you enjoyed. Well, 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 it's me, the number one small commentary spurg, Kamai. Today, I've been tasked with covering layer 3 of Pie Man's commentary iceberg. Before we begin, however, I'd like to thank Dr. Skipper for letting me come on to this video. I recommend that you subscribe to him, and hopefully you'll subscribe to me too. Without further ado though, let's begin. A few years back there was an epidemic in the YouTube community, where many YouTubers like Trigger Troll, PewDiePie, Parasynical, and many many more reacted to episodes of The Dr. Phil Show, mainly due to the fact that these reactions garnered millions upon millions of views. These videos got so many views however, because Dr. Phil clips would weasel their way into everyone's recommended, but due to the popularity of these videos, our tanned, bald-headed friend wasn't too happy. On March 15th, 2019, Parasynical uploaded Loaded, Dr. Phil is going to sue me. In this video, Pyro details how the Universal Music Group has been going around claiming and striking videos reacting to Dr. Phil. This was illegal for them to do, however, because all of these videos they claimed or struck fell under fair use. It will dry my circuits, and I can risk just enough power to get me to shore. So, a few weeks back, during the Johnson vs. Dream debacle, infamous YouTuber Def Noodles claimed that formerly well-respected commentary YouTuber John Swan was in fact alt-right. That was an interesting day on Twitter.com to say the least. But as per usual, Death Noodles didn't have any proof for this allegation, so the community memed on him for like the fifth time during 2021. Let me show you a meme that I made about this situation. Yes, life got boring because the internet's falling apart again with Trish Paytas shading Jeffree Star, Mr. Beast getting cancelled on Clubhouse, and Dream exposing an alt-right YouTuber. For this part, I didn't know whether the iceberg was referring to Keemstar falsely accusing people of being pedos, or Keemstar being accused of being one himself, so let's do both. The two examples of Keemstar falsely accusing people are RS Glory and Gold and Pyrocynical. However, it's recently came out that Pyro and the 14 year old French girl did have some sort of relationship, but there weren't any sexual conversations, so we'll just push that aside. Back to RS Glory and Gold however. In 2016, Keemstar accused RS Glory and Gold because he looked like someone who was a paedophile, which is just fucking stupid to be honest. But RS Glory and Gold got an apology from Keem, so yeah, happy days. For someone who deals with paedophile accusations, it's kind of ironic that Keemstar would be accused of being one. On June 20th, 2016, Grade A Underay released Grade A Underay vs Keemstar Part 1. Keemstar the pedo? Question mark? In this video, Grade claims that Keemstar is a pedophile because allegedly a 15 year old girl got naked for Keemstar on a live stream. Grade doesn't substantiate this claim very well, so I think I'll leave it here. In late 2018, content creator Go Kanaru made a video titled The Death of H3H3 Productions, Video Vigilante. This video was a content cop styled expose on Ethan Klein from H3H3 Productions. This is a very good and very well made video, but it was unfortunately removed from YouTube in December 2019, along with content cop Leafy. The video was taken down due to a recent change in YouTube's harassment policy. This policy defines harassment as content that targets individuals, which is pretty vague to be honest. A few months before the policy change in April 2019, YouTube CEO Susan Wabagjack sat down with multiple creators including Shane Dawson, James Charles and Ethan Klein. Keemstar proposed the theory that Ethan had the video taken down, which was met by Ethan mocking Keem and poking holes in his theory, which is understandable. So 
Suzy Lu is a reaction channel who made a living off of stealing anime episodes. The weebs began to mould. On March 12, 2019, Suzy filed a false copyright strike against a YouTuber named Mark After Dark. Mark made a meme about Suzy's reaction to The Last Guardian VR and used the meme as an intro to his video about the game, and she struck his video down. Then our favourite internet news bloke, Tips to News, got on the case and did an interview with a lawyer, which was also struck down. Everyone speculated it was Susie, then she went on to RFC After Hours to show her flag history and made an absolute tit of herself. I recommend you check out Nicholas Diorio's and John Swan's videos on the subject if you'd like to learn more. Some of you will know Chris Hansen from the TV show To Catch a Predator. Others may know him from the videos Nicholas Diorio and John Swan made about the guy. To put it bluntly, however, Hansen is a degenerate and a grifter. He works with a serial doxer named Anonymous Jean and has sold his credibility by working with internet grifter John Cristani and promoting the scam phone, the Escobar Fold 2. The Kill Stream, or The Ralph Retort, is a live show podcast hosted by alt right streamer Ethan Ralph. The Kill Stream is similar to that of Augie RFC's RFC After Hours, in terms of structure anyway. The only time I can remember any commentators actually going on the Kill Stream is when Nicholas Diorio and the quartering went on to have a debate because Nick and Tommy C were making fun of them. LT Corbus is an interesting case. She was a girl who started making commentary videos when she was 12, and started picking up traction due to a shout out from Pyrocynical. Then, in August 2018, LT Corbus rebranded to Soph, and started producing more right wing content. Then in April 2019, YouTuber and Pig, the fuckers, made a video and a few tweaks calling out Soph for her views about Muslim people. On August 1st of the same year, however, she was terminated for hate speech, according to an article by Metro.co.uk. The by the way, before you begin, Theodore is the son of Ethan and Hila Klein. Now back to it. On October 5th, 2020, the H3 and Keemstar drama got a bit weird due to this leafy tweet. There's a bit more to this, and I recommend you check out H3 vs Keemstar Drama is Getting Weird by Boblax. But the question is, was Leafy telling the truth or doing a little trolling? Okay, let's set the record straight. Doxing is defined by Dictionary.com as the search for and publish of private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet, typically with malicious intent. On a serious note however, Keem Star docks to just destiny. Keem did this by entering a branch of the commentary community known as the NCO. As well as working with most of the people in the NCO group chat, Keem also enlisted the help of doxer and pedophile, Zoom. I recommend you watch Nicholas Diorio's video about Keem Star if you'd like to know more. The Baited Podcast was a podcast hosted by Colossal is Crazy, Keemstar and Tommy C. Then, the hosts changed to Keemstar, Andy Melanakis and Anything for Views. Then, Colossal came back to replace Andy as a podcast host. The reason why there was such a change around with hosts is due to the fact that the three original hosts fell out over money. At least that's what I could find when researching this portion, but feel free to correct me on Twitter or in Skipper's comment section. Storyfire is a creative video slash writing social entertainment platform. It also has a written post format like our favourite social media platform, Twitter.com. Created by Jesse Ridgeway from McJuggernuggets, the app was seen as a YouTube alternative. Then the app was going to shut down and it, then it wasn't. It's, it's all really confusing to be honest. <laughs> On February 2nd, 2017, the Hot Wetsuit podcast made an episode titled The End, and in this episode, it features two of the podcast hosts, Elvis the Alien and Bionic Pig, but the third host, Zaptai, isn't in attendance, instead replaced by a 16 year old snake, um, I mean, sorry, I mean, um, I mean, I'm Alex. In this episode, a few allegations are levied against Zaptai. The more infamous allegations are Zaptai being a diagnosed sociopath, 
and Zatai cheating on his girlfriend with four other girls. Then a few days after the cast, Zatai was accused of being a pedophile on Twitter.com. Turns out it was all bullshit. If you're interested, I recommend you check out Nicholas Diorio's three-part series about Zatai. Ah, the E-Boys, my favourite group of Arkham Asylum escapees, featuring a human Rubik's Cube, a grizzly bear, Mimulus, and the snake we've just talked about. To cut it short, I never wanted to make a group channel with the four nutcases I've just mentioned. These four nutcases then snaked Ainaba, Kavos made a video and solely blamed Alex, which is kinda his thing I suppose. Quite like Batman and the Joker, but I'll let you guess which one is which. And um, yeah, it became like an entire thing. And now the E-Boys and I never are best friends again. Happy fucking days. Maximilian Muss was a gaming channel that gained popularity due to, um, to this. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Okay, okay, enough of that, enough of that. Anyway, our buddy Max has had a few encounters with people in this community like Turkey Tom, the infamous troll, LT Cobra, and Moist Critical. All of the creators mentioned made videos about Max, and due to Critical's video about Max, he deleted his channel. Good fucking riddance, I say, the guy's an absolute degenerate. My favourite reviewer, Quentin Reviews. He's had a few interactions with the more superior bird commentator, Turkey Tom. And Tom mentioned him in his video about YouTubers and political opinions. In that video, Tom spoke about his experience with Quentin and he seems pretty cringe, not gonna lie. Also, another YouTuber named Beige Frequency made two videos about him. Anyway, thanks Skipper for letting me on and I'll hand you back over to him or whoever's doing Layer 4. I don't know. Subscribe to Kamai. <clears throat> All right, guess it's my turn. Without a crystal ball. Karen, or, I mean, uh, Katie Joy, otherwise known as Without a Crystal Ball, is a T channel with 140,000 subscribers. Apologies for the confusion right there. Both names start with the letter K. She describes the channel as, quote, the fruit salad channel of YouTube covering a variety of topics from the numerous James Charles allegations to multiple videos on the Duggar family from the reality show 19 Kids and Counting. Why this woman, or really any other T channel, has any sort of following is beyond me. They do nothing of value and most times get shit wrong. Joy first gained traction in the commentary community in early July of 2020 after she signal boosted a false claim that Shane Dawson was being investigated by the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department for... Um, kid diddling related actions. The claim in question was debunked on Augie RFC's live stream with him, Bo Blacks, Nick DiOrio, and Tipster calling the LASD on stream where they confirmed that there was no active investigation. During the stream, Augie DM'd Joy asking her to come on stream to clear things up. However, she denied the invitation, saying she had nothing to answer for since she wasn't the one making the accusation. Supposedly, shortly after this, viewers of Augie's stream went into her stream to mess with her, which led to her blocking him on Twitter and threatening a lawsuit on another stream, which went nowhere and seemed to be the end of it. Months later, she re-emerged as a talking point in the community after she was on the receiving end of a $5 million defamation lawsuit from Toddy Westbrook and her husband James. The lawsuit alleged that Joy made defamatory claims against the Westbrooks, including claims they have massive criminal records based off one instance where James was caught smoking pot as a teenager, that Joy was stalking them, among a number of other claims. It was also cited in the court document that Joy had admitted in one of her videos that she was guilty of creating troll accounts to quote, create a massive ripple effect where everyone becomes impacted and untruths become facts. In basic terms, she admitted to slander. On the YouTube side of things, this escalated when Creepshow Arts uploaded a 43 minute video talking about the lawsuit in depth, which received a privacy complaint for showing what Joy claimed was a private email address, despite the address being publicly listed on her channel. Joy also has encouraged her audience to false flag people who watch her and make commentary, which for the record, is not a violation of terms of service as it is fair use. 
This, of course, is all in an attempt to censor legitimate criticism. The Toddy Westbrook lawsuit was later dismissed, and as of today, Karen Joy continues to be a terrible YouTuber. Wait, uh, Katie, Katie, I mean Katie Joy. God, I I'm so sorry, I don't know how to speak. Turkey Tom Racism Turkey Tom is a commentator with 185,000 subscribers who's famously known for fucking up the pirate cynical situation. But did you know he's also a complete racist? Okay, not actually. I'll let this clip speak for itself. Additionally, I'm not too sure that you have much room to talk about racist comments when you say shit like No, you stupid fucking Honk fucking honk. Where this all stems from is back in 2019 when Tom put up a video talking about YouTube sponsors and made some anti-Semitic jokes at the expense of Ethan Klein of H3H3 Productions, who happens to be Jewish. This was called out by YouTuber D'Angelo Wallace, who went on Twitter and accused Tom of anti-Semitism and racism in his video. In addition, Wallace leaked DMs from 2018 of Tom using the N-word in a joking context, which he did admit to doing, however he denied the accusations of racism, saying he was edgy, maybe a bit too edgy, but he's not racist, and saying that saying the N-word doesn't make you racist. These accusations of racism surfaced again in the aftermath of his complete and utter fuck-up of the pyrocynical situation in December of 2020. Now, of course, say what you will about Tom, but something to consider is that at the time of him making those remarks, he was 16 years old, being born in August of 2002, which would make him a sophomore or junior in high school when the remarks were made. So defenders of his say that he was just being edgy, because at the end of the day, edgy teenagers will be edgy, and being edgy is much different from racism. Tommy C versus Lieutenant Cobra. Tommy C versus Lieutenant Cobra, in short, was the dumbest drama to happen on Online in 2020. Essentially what happened was 16 year old commentator Lieutenant Cobra put out a tweet responding to iNabber who was criticizing another YouTuber for turning down a $7400 sponsorship deal for the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, that, that was a joke, please, please don't hate me. Anyways, this in turn sparked a stupid debate between Cobra and Nick DiOrio about the whole thing, and then 40 year old host of SFTP News, Tommy C, chimed in on Twitter saying, I like the way you melt down at Lieutenant Cobra. Cobra, hilarious. This led to more back and forth on Twitter where Tommy claimed that Cobra called his three-year-old son a Nazi, which Cobra said in response that he commented the word Nazi on a Tommy C video and that Tommy was twisting that to fuel his own narrative. This culminated in possibly the dumbest meltdown of all time on Tommy's live stream, followed by an instance on his second channel where he insinuates Cobra is a pedophile. Lieutenant Cobra is an absolute perfect example why they should raise the age to 18 because if you can draw a following like he can and what, what did he get famous for calling somebody a pedophile and he calls everybody a pedophile and he has no fun and, and does his parents raid him in oh no because they're probably drunks his parents have utterly fucking failed think that's fucking upsetting just remember my kid throughout this he is their parents this is a complete and total lapse of parenting YouTube should raise the fucking rate to 18. There is no way that some child should be on there calling people fucking pedophiles, uh, uh, going after children and be able to hold an audience and then hiding behind the fact. Lieutenant Cobra, you, your whole fucking family are utter garbage and trash. I bet you're fucking white trash. I bet you're scraping the bottom of the barrel if you're not on fucking welfare. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on heroin. What are you, 16? So, ah, maybe 18, 19. We'll see you on the fucking streets on heroin. You are a trash bag. You are the perfect reason why they should raise the age to 18. And I don't care what happens to you. A fucking Mack truck wouldn't change my position if it ran you fucking down. Your family's in peace, your father's shit, your mother's shit, and you're shit. And for anybody that says anything different, okay, it's fit. just call my kid a Nazi. Fuck you, you piece of shit. And I, you know what? Here's another thing. Here's why you got pissed off. You can't take Nick in a debate. Not at all. Not a little bit. You're a garbage bag, a future heroin addict, I, I, just a dragon society. I can see why your parents are remainers, losers that know nothing. You're wrong, wrong about Article 13. You're wrong about bread. What's it like to lose all the time? What's it like not to have a girlfriend ever because you look like you're perpetually fucking 12 years old? So guess what? Rule change. Like, what the fuck rule rule change. You're fucking on this platform. 
you're fucking 14 and you're taking shots at my family, you are fair fucking game. Your family's trash, fucking your your mother's trash, you're all of you trash over there. Utter fucking loser trash. Now go fucking cry about your 16. Go cry about it. Go cry. You know what? You know what you can do? You can cry to your little English commentary fans. They're terrified of Nick and I. Terrified. I wouldn't let Lieutenant Cobra enter any children. Anybody who talks about sexual deviance as much as he does, I would be careful if he walked walk by an elementary school. I am dead serious about that. I think it is absolutely fucking bizarre. I think it is exactly... I think it is bizarre. Absolutely bizarre that he talks about sexual perversion and this month and is that obsessed with it. I would not oh. be shocked if we have a priest right, in a yeah, whorehouse situation. Going I'm going that far, so shut up. Bro. So shut up. So shut up. Yeah, I'm calling Cobra nuts. You're actually right. So what's the difference? He's done it to everybody else. Why can't I do it to him? In response to all of this, Cobra went on to make a response video calling Tommy a lunatic, liar, hypocrite, and basically just destroyed this man child. Like, dude, say what you want about Lieutenant Cobra, but if you're 40 years old calling a kid troll a pedophile and saying you wouldn't care if he got hit by a truck, you need to consider counseling. On that note, Tommy, if you want some recommendations on counselors or therapists or whatever, hit me up. I can probably get you set up with someone. At It's Dr. Demonic on Twitter. Yes, I did just shamelessly self-promote. No, I don't care. Angelica Oles. Quick question. Have you ever seen anyone delete their whole Twitter account because of someone memeing on them? Well, after I'm done talking about the situation with this beauty community drama YouTuber, you will have. This all begins with a tweet from Angelica Oles back in 2018 where she said, maybe they should speed the whole Brexit shit up because this isn't looking good, to which Bill Baines quote tweeted it in January of 2021 saying, Angelica Oles pro Brexit poggers. She deleted the tweet shortly after, but then John Swan reposted screenshots of it simply saying, lol, and everything goes downhill from there. Angelica, for whatever reason, decided to get offended at a three-letter caption and started fighting with John on Twitter about how John is spreading false information by posting the tweet to make it look like she's pro-Brexit, which honestly, who cares? John Swan didn't take very kindly to her saying he's spreading misinformation, ironic considering what happened to him, and he posted evidence of Angelica Ohl spreading misinformation about James Charles and taking no responsibility for it. I was hoping last video was going to be my last video about James Charles because frankly I'm sick and tired. I feel like I've said that before. And obviously the last probably main point is that he is a predator. Now it's been confirmed. I'm not trying to get sued once again but Tati did say you were a predator so I don't know. I'm going to believe my queen Tati you know. Allegedly James Charles is constantly pursuing straight boys uh, which we've been new. As you know James Charles really likes escape rooms and Tati said sexuality is not an escape cape room that you can crack and wow she snapped she came for his throat i'm living <laughs> james has now dipped below 16 million i'm just you know gonna put this out there congrats james charles on 15 million subscribers um only up from here huh in about 24 hours he has lost a million subscribers now i wish i even had like a million subscribers to lose so if those million subscribers want to come over my way i don't really make makeup videos at this point i'm sick and tired of hearing about james charles i don't want to see his face anymore i don't want to hear his name for at least a month before i can go and check up on him and see how he's doing with his new shade called social blade it's this beautiful new red shade it's available now for sale so go and get it while stocks last and use code cancelled for 10 percent off talking about shades and palettes i don't know what to do with this i can't even bear to look at it because it's got his name on it and i'm just like i've just had enough i think overall I'm glad this happened. I'm glad he got called out because hopefully now he'll fix up his act because he knows he can't get away with it anymore. And that's kind of where I want to end this on. That's my opinion. I think he deserved it and it was coming to him and karma catches up with you sooner or later. I think some people think they're invincible because they're rich and famous or whatever it is. And I think at the end of the day, karma will catch you and she will bite you in the ass. And that's probably something you'd enjoy, so. That's me signing out. So, I didn't think I'd do this, but then shit hit the fan, took a 180 twist once again, and um, I don't want my channel, well, my last video on my channel about the situation to be kind of factually, not factually incorrect. It, it was based on facts that were provided, but that's not what the facts are now. So I feel like I need an update 
so that people don't get the wrong idea. Soon after this, as the commentary community is known for, they proceeded to criticize and meme on Angelica Oles. Angelica started blocking them, the community called her out, and eventually she deactivated her Twitter account. Moral of the story here is if you ever want to drive someone off of a social media platform, all you gotta do is quote, retweet a statement, and include the word poggers. Anonymous Gene One of the largest stories of 2020 was the Chris Hansen investigation into professional moron and child groomer Onision. If you are even somewhat familiar with the story, you've probably at one point heard the name Anonymous Gene. Anonymous Gene is the screen name of a currently unidentified weasel who works for Chris Hansen. He's known for engaging in doxing, targeted harassment, and attempting to censor critics of Hansen. He first came into the spotlight in January of 2020 when he doxed Onision on Twitter, posting his home address and phone number. Not only that, but he also doxed his family members, including his mother, father, sisters, and grandfather. It was then discovered that on Gene's account, he linked a Google document of multiple things including doxes, Facebook groups in Onision's town, and a full guide on how to abuse the YouTube copyright system, which mind you, is perjury, which is a crime. The community would take notice of this and would begin investigating Gene, discovering that he worked with Chris Hansen after one, Hansen confirmed it, and two, Gene leaked a screenshot accidentally including Hansen's phone number since with Google Voice it displays the phone number of the person you're messaging in the search bar. But it wasn't until after John Swan's first video on Chris Hansen that Gene really was noticed in the community. Gene began to commit targeted harassment against John, A-Star, and Josh Pescator, getting the three of them banned off of Twitter for spam, and doxing all three of them within the span of just less than two months. This would result in part three of John's series on Chris Hansen getting delayed, then reworked into a different video titled The Anonymous Gene Files. This video would go on to expose everything discussed thus far, and more. To this day, Gene remains active on Twitter continuing to harass Onision, and Hansen has continued to deny any connection to Gene, despite it being proven multiple times. It is unknown whether or not they still work together, however I believe it to be so. Goon Squad The Goon Squad is a name that is sometimes used to refer to a particular group of commentary channels who were critical of Chris Hansen, including Augie RFC, Bo Blacks, Nick Diorio, John Swan, Some Ordinary Gamers, Aiden Projects, Repsion, Repzilla, Edwin's Generations, and Josh Pescator. The name was coined by Chris Hansen himself on an episode of Have a Seat with Chris Hansen featuring Noah Ray, a survivor of Davi Vanity. The story behind it is that in an episode of RFC After Hours discussing Chris Hansen selling the Onision story, a joke was made in the Discord call towards an anti-O supporter by the name of Big Money Onision, which went like this. Big Did Money. Did call you son? Oh my god. Oh my God. Wait, 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 I want to ask one question. All right, if, if Hanson allegedly calls the, uh, the, uh, the victims his daughters, does he call you his son? There you go. Do you call him daddy? <laughs> oh, that was a better one. <laughs> oh my God. Towards the end of the show, Noah Ray joined the call to express her disapproval of the joke, saying that it was an attack on all victims and survivors, which was not the case at all. This escalated into a heated argument between her and the group. All that has been going well, no, on. All for you're years. saying to us hey. is that we don't care about survivors. So you're not yeah. trying to be helpful. So let shut Edward the fuck up and let me talk. Oh, you, there you are. Oh, shut the fuck up while I'm trying to. Okay. Voice yes, I, that's what I, I'm I saying. Know, I, because I you came in here. You came in here saying you had a problem with the entire live stream. This is becoming high school situation for me now. I can a hostile environment where. People here are not looking to fight you, and, and you came in okay. here like, just like, like talking times. at everybody. At everybody, I'm we need to have a conversation and bring it down a notch. All right. I'm Obviously, this this stream wait, wait, wait. regularly, you know, is on the edgier side and says offensive shit, 
and uh, what we were trying to uh, con- stream and bring down to you came verify in the was that we never picked on survivors. And, and said that you I, had a problem I, I, with the last three hours of content. The, the, you came in here oh and, and, oh and, and you have cited Let one example. And then we'll, uh, this is ridiculous. I'm just trying to say that. Look, I don't think there's. Can I don't think there's any more benefit. Can we meet every? Can you meet everyone, please? This is I got it. Right, no, just right, temporarily. Right, temporarily. Right, right. I just don't see any further benefit in, in, in being in, in this in this call anymore. I mean, I don't know what more objective there is because yes, we've heard you, and um, I, you know, you see the intentions. And I said talk shit about Chris if you want. No, let's see what you have to say. Joke about the survivors. All I said yes. was talk. Sh- I said I have no problem with the stream. I've been watching it this whole time. Talk now you have no Chris. problem with the stream. I'm I done. I'm said, done. Oh okay. my god! If you would listen and pull your fucking head out of your ass for two seconds, I said eh, I have no problem with you guys reaming Chris because ream where it deserves. Like okay. I just said a minute ago. And then I said the only problem I have with the stream is that you mentioned the survivors in a tasteless joke, and that was it. And you guys want to say right. that I have a whole problem with the whole stream when I came on here and said multiple I, times I have no problem with you okay, covering good. Chris and the Rony It's a semantic debate. So it's, so it's settled, and, and that's why I it's apologize on, on, on my behalf and because and we started that. So it's my fault, essentially, for any jokes that let on I from will, it. I will, and, I will leave it up to the professionals because there are none here. The following Wednesday, Noah appeared on Hanson's show, gaslighting the whole situation into something it wasn't, which Chris believed without question, and eventually, Chris went on to say this. But why is it necessary for eight content creators to essentially sit around in a, in a circle, make crass remarks, uh, some of them acting as if they were in a goon squad, and targeting the victims. And that is the origin of the Goon Squad. Shiloh slanders Nick. In February 2020, while the Onision story was arguably at its peak, one of the victims, Sarah, published a tweet in an attempt to crowdfund a new laptop for school after giving her current one to the FBI for evidence. This, however, was called out by Nick Diorio for one particular reason. See, before this, Sarah had sent her laptop to Chris Hansen, saying he would give it to the FBI when in reality, it sat untouched in his assistant's apartment for months. His question was, if Sarah didn't have the laptop the whole time, why does she suddenly need people to donate money for a new one? It didn't really add up. Nick would DM Sarah the same question where she said a friend let her borrow hers the first time around and had since taken it back. She also said extra money would go towards her tuition as she lived on her own and had a full-time job. She would also publish a public apology in case people got the wrong impression from the whole thing. In another exchange later on, Nick posted the DMs between him and Sarah to make a point, and then soon after, Shiloh, another victim of Onision and professional bitch, put out a tweet telling her followers to mass flag Nick for releasing the DMs, which is not a bannable offense, encouraging the doxing of a 19-year-old, which there is no evidence of, and insinuating that Nick was a predator by using the hashtag, hashtag #deplatformpredators. This led to Nick having to private his Twitter account to avoid being falsely flagged off of the platform by the mob that Shiloh had just sent his way. Soon after all of this, Nick uploaded a video explaining his side where he also exposes Shiloh for doing the same things she was accusing him of. To summarize, Shiloh accused me of leaking DMs and then she literally went and leaked DMs. Shiloh accused me of doxing and then had to backtrack, but it turns out that she was the one doxing and threatening people from her alt account. Shiloh accused me of harassment and fortunately for her, Twitter support disagreed. However, to add insult to injury, they found her tweet violated their TOS on targeted harassment. Shiloh attempted to deplatform me under hashtag deplatform predators and doubled down by calling me a creep, which absolutely could impact my real life and my job. Since then, she has called Bong King a predator in his private DMs by calling him a mini Onision. Shiloh made a half-assed apology, but indicated even after her tweet was taken down for targeted harassment that I still deserve to be reported. And this was all over a few simple questions. If I wasn't skeptical before, well, I certainly am now. Deaf Noodles versus Commentary 
Death Noodles is a self-proclaimed satirical news channel with over 500,000 subscribers and he is pretty much hated by most of the commentary community for not being able to handle criticism, calling people who don't like him Nazis, and is just a general degenerate. I mean, this guy is so sensitive that I mentioned him once in a video and he blocked me on Twitter despite me never tagging him outside of that. One example comes in November of 2020 when a creator by the name of Grady Hooper made a video criticizing Deaf Noodles, which starts by calling him sensitive. When he saw this video, he tweeted it out with a caption reading, Absolute genius makes a video telling the world he's madly in love with me in a passive aggressive tone, literally proving the guy's point. Also, he's a 26 year old man that has cat ear headphones. I doubt anybody is madly in love with him. Another example is when during the Dream vs. John Swan drama, he proceeded to refer to John Swan as an alt-right YouTuber. Dream exposing an alt-right YouTuber. By the way, am I the only one who always has trouble opening up Capri Suns? The straw always goes all the way through. As a matter of fact, he called the majority of the commentary community alt-right YouTubers. Hello everyone, it's me, public enemy number one of the alt-right commentary community, a cat in a Minecraft house. Yes, everyone who disagrees with you and thinks you're a moron is a literal Nazi, spot on. The thing that makes Deaf Noodles truly a complete and utter weasel though, is the fact that he has a disclaimer on his channel essentially saying, I'm playing a character, therefore I can get away with literally anything I say and or do on this platform. That's of course not surprising that he believes that, considering that cats, generally speaking, have the IQ of a 2-3 to three year old child. Deji sues Kavos In June of 2020, commentary YouTuber Kavos made a video talking about how Deji, popular creator and brother of KSI, botted subscribers to reach 10 million, showing fairly significant evidence including an IP address that linked back to his area and a recovery email on the bot service being a ComedyShortsGamer.com email, Comedy Shorts Gamer being another name for Deji. Soon after Kavos released these videos, they were privatized and when asked about why they were privatized, he said that it was because of a legal complaint. This led to speculation that Deji had submitted the complaint because earlier he had tweeted saying everything was in the hands of his legal team. This was further backed up by another tweet from Deji's father who said that he was speaking to their legal team about Kavos and Keemstar. Eventually, it was confirmed when Kavos tweeted directly saying he and Deji were in a legal dispute. That's pretty much the extent of the situation. It's unknown if the dispute is still going on or if it has been resolved, however, the videos on Kavos' channel are still privatized. Hashtag stop JStation JStation was one of the most notorious YouTubers on the platform who was well known for being controversial, from contacting dead celebrities at 3am to making fun of being gay to arguably his biggest controversy when he faked his girlfriend's death, made a 3am video on her, and she came out with allegations of abuse going as far as to file a police report on him. On February 4th, 2020, Keemstar, the host of Drama Alert, started the hashtag, hashtag stop JStation in a 10 minute video discussing JStation's atrocities on the platform. His reasoning behind this was because the majority of JStation's demographic was made up of kids, and by starting this hashtag, it would make JStation famous, causing parents of these children to find out about it and lead to his cancellation. We need to make JStation famous, so famous that it reaches parents. We need to make this video talking about some of the horrible things that he's done so popular that it reaches parents. And we need a hashtag, and that hashtag is hashtag stop JStation. I want you guys, all right, to send this video to Twitter. Send this video to Snapchat, to, to TikTok, to wherever, Facebook, all right? Get this video out there with the hashtag StopJStation so parents can be aware of what their children are watching. To an extent, this hashtag did wind up working with YouTube fully demonetizing JStation's channel around two and a half weeks after Keemstar's video. JStation would then move to another channel and over a year later, YouTube would finally remove him from the platform permanently. Gray discovered a math formula. One of the pioneers of YouTube commentary was a channel by the name of Grade A Under A. He was well known for his satirical rant style of content with visuals literally being drawn in Microsoft Paint. 
This gained him over 3 million subscribers before disappearing in the summer of 2020. But something you may not know is that Grade actually discovered a math formula. Sort of. Not really. In a 2015 video titled Racism Test, he makes a brief comment on how in his third year of college, he had discovered a completely new math formula on his own. Okay, the answer was me! I found that formula in my third year of university, right? However, upon fact-checking via the subreddit r slash they did the math, the discovery was near meaningless, with one redditor saying, quote, It is a worthless trinket of math trivia. It doesn't do anything. People don't come up with equations simply because they exist. They come up with equations to solve problems. There are uncountably infinite numbers of equations. This is just one of them. Gangnam Style Slenderman a relic of old commentary memes is iDubbbz's Slenderman Gangnam Style video. The video was released around the peak of Gangnam Style's popularity and featured iDubbbz playing the game Slender the 8 Pages while dancing to Gangnam Style and lip syncing. Really, uh, just see it for yourself. Oh, there's a note. A note. 7 of 8. He would then put out an apology video, and that should have been the end of it. But then, PyroCynical uploaded a video about the situation, sharing a private DM from H3H3, where he says that Pyro is the cancer of YouTube. H3 would later go on Reddit and claim that the situation was taken out of context and explain that the conversation was a private DM between him and Leafy about making a Pyro exposed video because they believed Pyro was copying them. Leafy then put up his own video talking about H3H3 making the claim that he was fake and how he was the one that wanted to go after Pyro, showing a DM of him saying, quote, don't give Pyro any platform to defend himself. But that was not the full DM conversation, and Leafy picked that DM out of context. In fact, H3H3 put out a Reddit thread exposing DMs of how Leafy was really the primary instigator in the situation with him talking a ton of shit about Pyro. H3 also explains that while he was going to be involved in Leafy's video on Pyro, he backed out because he thought it was stupid. Which, at the end of the day, it was, and that's that. Okay, let's cut the bullshit and the greetings. I'm wearing a name tag, asshole. Don't ask me who I am. You know I'm youtube.com slash a hole in my garden. And you know I've cursed your iceberg watching with my segment. Let's be real here, I'm most likely the black sheep of this iceberg. For one, my editing and audio are probably nowhere near as good and I'm not a commentary channel. Or at least I wouldn't consider myself one. Why I am, however, is someone who procrastinates and wastes a lot of time watching endless amounts of YouTube videos. In fact, I'd hazard a guess that whilst writing this script, I've opened up YouTube on instinct and began mindlessly watching whatever's in my record. Recommended. This has led to a lot of wasted time and a lot of failing grades, but it's also ended up giving me creative inspirations and people to watch in the commentary community. Pyrocynical, Zaptai, Colossal is Crazy, Emplem, and Nerd City. And the debatable inclusion of H. Bomber Guy are all people who I would call influencers on my content. Once you get past all the dumb squabbling and nude sending, the commentary community is home to a lot of great content. But this elaboration of context has led me to breaking my vow to cut the bullshit, and I don't want to risk breaking the promise I made to Skipper to have my segment be finished within the allotted time. You all know what an iceberg is, you know what the commentary community is. You may not know who I am, but don't worry. Like a 12 year old making a video on Dream, we'll figure it out as we go along. So let's jump off the platform and see us go surf into talking about the first topic. Behind the meme. Alright, we're starting out with one I feel comfortable with, and fans of Ant Blumen should be intimately familiar with this guy. Behind the meme is, or rather was, a shit tier YouTube channel who made videos explaining the context and so forth about your favourite current memes. All the Behind the Memes fans, come at your crips and pour one for the deceased, because if we're being completely honest, the guy's content was complete dog shit and lacking in any real flair or substance. Employment made two videos on the mofo, which resulted in Behind the Meme reacting very poorly and childishly. The new one behind the meme's coffin, though, was when he faked and clickbaited a suicide video, only to then pull a 180 and justify the video as an ad for suicide prevention hotlines. Don't think it's by any means a hot take to say that this was fucked up for him to do, and 100% made him deserving of any and all criticism he got thrown his way. So yeah, fuck you behind the meme. Blow me. Comment cop payroll. 
Showing my inexperience with the commentary community here, but prior to writing the script, I had no idea who Comment Cop is. And to this day, I still don't really. You can yell at me in the comments for not understanding the topic, but you can't fault me for struggling to try and keep up and understand whatever drama this is referencing. All I found is this tweet, which, due to my own stupidity and unfamiliarity with the larger community, I can't make heads or tails of. But if you know, then comment it down below. Colossal and Nerds J Station Video Colossal is crazy and Nerd City. Probably two of my favourite content creators in the commentary community, and also just YouTube in general. Both are renowned for their writing styles, levels of research and analysis in given topics, spectacular presentation, and for never making videos. And carrying on that motif, during March of last year, Colossal released a trailer for an upcoming collab between himself and Nerd City on the extremely scummy and morally bankrupt piece of living piss known as JStation. The trailer projected the release date as May of 2020, but lo and behold here we are almost exactly a year after that initial trailer was released, and there's still no video. And to my hearing from word of mouth, JStation isn't even on the fucking platform anymore, so I guess you can add that collab to the list of things from 2020 that never got released. Genuine shame this never came out. Colossal and Nerd Stars are ones that would really complement each other and make for a fun and informative video. But we can't be like the two of them and be complacent with what they have, we gotta be on the grind and move on to the next topic. New Commentary Order The New Commentary Order is a group of YouTubers, mostly commentators, striving to make quality content one video at a time. Subscribe to this channel to watch the official NCO podcast, where creators argue over controversial issues or just talk and discuss current affairs. If that sounds like the work of not me, that is because it is not me. This was written in the About tab for the new Commentary Order channel by YouTube's very own twat with too much free time, The Right Opinion. The podcast only had about two episodes with a rotating number of hosts and has been left abandoned for two years now. I like the revolving host thing a lot, that's why I'm such a big fan of Sleepycast, but TRO isn't enough of a personality to carry a whole podcast in my opinion. Tower Dog Leaks Some of you wayward souls left over from the old days of YouTube, back when Leafy was at his peak, may remember a lot of noise about YouTube's new demonetization policy, the nature of which was fully disclosed to the public when Twitter user TowerDog released a twit longer, leaking YouTube's true goal and intention with the demonetization program in the form of a document sent to employees responsible for reviewing and approving content, a lot of which exposed examples of double standards and just blatant attempts at censorship for the sake of appeasing advertisers. The leak also documented there being a meeting between YouTube staff around mid-2016, the topic of which was the discussion of what should be done about undesirable creators, which included Leafy is here, Grade A under A, Keemstar, and Onision. It's theorised that the demonetization system was made to slowly weed out the undesirable creators, but to my knowledge this isn't concrete. Blazed SMP Okay, you all are gonna fucking despise me. Try and yell at your monitors, but I honestly have no idea what the fuck the drama is with Blazed SMP. And apart from a bunch of playthroughs and a Twitter account, I can't find anything really. So my input is limited to this. Blazed is a Minecraft SMP created by key figures of the commentary community, such as Aiden Projects, and features a bunch of other YouTube people which I will probably put on screen. Again, I apologise for the poor form and research on my part, but in my defence, very difficult to research stuff like this when sources of information is all over the place. Nerd City Caused Copper Okay, I'm digging this, a subject that I know about and from a channel I really like. Reiterating what I said a few topics ago, Nerd City is one of the best creators in the commentary community, mostly because of his dedication and meticulous research and analysis, which is best exemplified in his video on Jake Paul's predatory and questionably legal practices of advertising. To loosely summarise the overall talking points and conclusion of the video, Jake Paul knowingly and egregiously manipulates his child demographic, preying upon their poor buyer sense and spending influence through techniques that have been illegal on mainstream television since the boom of TV advertising around the 1980s. The overall thesis of Nerd City's video was that Jake Paul will eventually have to pay for his transgressions as YouTube becomes more and more mainstream and regulated. Nerd City warns of the potential of an organisation coming in and cracking down on YouTubers whose income relies primarily on the viewership of children. And wouldn't you know it, an organisation came in and cracked down on YouTubers whose income relies primarily on the viewership of children. So is Nerd City responsible for Copper? I mean, his video was promoted on mainstream articles and such, could there be a causality? Yes, of course there's a possibility, but I lean towards no. The exploitation of kids by the media has been an ongoing struggle for decades now, and the wild west that was the internet is now starting to be regulated as it becomes more and more legitimate as a hub for popular media. I feel like coppers still would have existed on YouTube even if Nerd City neglected to make his Jake Paul video. However, that doesn't necessarily insinuate it had no influence on content regulation, but I guess that will always remain to be unanswered and a little more than speculation. 
John Swan versus Twiz Fizz. Real quick shout out to Sir Sloth for making a video on this topic. Super helpful in getting all this shit done quickly and effectively. I'ma try and make sure Skipper includes his channel in the description. So yeah, back on topic. John Swan and Twiz Fizz had Twitter beef. Nothing out of the ordinary for YouTube people. Seemingly all started when Twiz Fizz said that she hated John Swan and escalated when the two started making videos on one another. Both very obviously taking the piss. But yeah. There doesn't seem to be anything deep to this beef between the two. But maybe if the two got a lawyer to sort this shit out, maybe that whole situation with Dream could have been avoided. Onision Documentary Okay, so apparently pedo hunter and internet funny man Chris Hansen made a documentary on everybody's favourite YouTuber, Onision. And it's not very good, apparently. Onision seems like the perfect topic for a mainstream documentary. Hell, there are tons of great videos documenting the insanity of this guy. So despite what people are saying about this documentary, I'd definitely be interested in watching it. But I ain't paying anything to go see it on some bumfuck streaming service. Miss me with that bullshit. Leafy nudes. Wait, no, don't skip, I can explain. And studio mandate from Dr. Skipper himself specifically states I'm unable to show a picture of little Leafy. So if you are insecure in your sexuality or not on the mood to see another man's junk, then don't panic because I will not show anything of the sort. Okay, now that mental image is scarred into your brain, let me explain what this is referencing. In 2017, somebody managed to get a hold of Leafy's username and password for a Snapchat, wherein they accessed his memories only to find a wealth of nudes of the defamed commentator. This was after the content cop as well, so it was all just salt in the jap side really. There isn't really much more more to add to this other than his nudes got leaked. But in my research I found this article and I don't think I could live with myself if I didn't share it with you all. Check out the popular YouTuber and game streamer Leafy is here nudes and nude porn video leaked from his iCloud. This ugly boy showed his big c and spread ass in the sex tape he recorded. He's not gay <laughs> as you assumed. <laughs> Jesus, Scandal Planet, why you gotta be so hard on my boy Leafy? What did he do to you? Well, fuck you all. There's some big ass perverts, huh? Mr. Enter slash Tom situation. Okay, you all know who Turkey Tom is. The man needs no introduction. In fact, he's probably watching this video right now. In which case, hi Tom, nice to meet you. But I'm going off the assumption that you don't know who Mr. Enter is, so him, I'll explain. Mysterious Mr. Enter is a cartoon reviewer who is renowned for his sloppy editing, poor unfounded takes, and his overtly hostile persona. The operative word here being was. While still having a lot of issues and still being a critic I don't put much stock in, Enter's content has definitely approved in the past few years, around the period Tom made his videos on Mr. Enter. The first one definitely gave Enter a fair shot and was fair towards his content, although it still had a lot of issues typical of Tom, which I guess I'll get more into with the second video, which was just awful. Tom has since deleted the video, so he may well agree with me, but I don't think it's by any means a controversial take to say that Tom was certainly needlessly uncharitable towards Enter as a person. The second video was intended as a critique of Enter's Kickstarter video, wherein he asked for $350,000 to make a pilot for his own series. Yeah, it's a dumb goal and that opens Enter up for criticism. The error Tom made was through muddying the video in jokes which drastically misrepresented Enter's character at best and caused undue harassment at worst. Mr. Enter then responded to this in his own video called Talking About My Online Harassment, which caused Tom to delete the videos out of realising what he did and has since admitted wrongdoing. I think that whole situation serves as a good lesson in accountability and how you should handle your platform. Nobody is completely innocent in the situation but both parties are on neutral turns and have moved on afterwards. Sanders Kennedy Sanders Kennedy was a YouTube drama reporter who gained near complete widespread ridicule after sparking a drama with Shane Dawson. A lot of you may remember Shane Dawson being cancelled over old videos of his wherein he sexualized an, at the time, 11 year old Willow Smith. Kennedy sent these videos to the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and said to his audience that this had resulted in an investigation, which... No. The LASD confirmed to the public that there was no investigation whatsoever into Dawson, leading to Kennedy backtracking and lying about the situation, stating that he never did state there was an investigation despite there being explicit evidence to the contrary. He also monetized the video which combined with his outright lying severely damaged his credibility. That's it from me. If you by some cosmic roll of the dice enjoyed this segment, then check out my channel if you like media analysis, reviews, or other stuff in that ballpark. But don't watch the Robocop iceberg because that video is terrible. As it stands, I'm edging closer and closer to 1k and that is my ultimate goal. So if you like me and enjoyed my content, then please help me out by supporting me. So yeah, thank you to Skipper for having me on and now I'll turn the microphone over to whoever's next. 
Hey, I'm Alibi. Now I'm just going to assume that none of you have any idea who I am, so I'm just going to do a short introduction of myself before I get into it. My name's Alibi. I'm a video essayist commentator that likes to talk about a wide variety of things. Right now, I'm not really interested in drama, so I talk about music instead. I might go back to making videos about commentators and drama soon, but in the meantime, go check out some of my stuff. But I'm not going to waste any more of your time, so let's just get into it. Keemstar vs. Tipster. Now for this part, I'm only going to go over Keem's perspective, because I couldn't really find a video in which Tipster responds to it. Apollo Legend made a suicide note on Twitter, but I couldn't really find the exact date on which he did. But without even getting full context, Nicholas Diorio, Augie RFC, and Bo Blacks all decided to defend or also put out false information about Apollo's passing. Keemstar was mad at those people for not getting full context and just wanting to break the story first. According to Keem, none of the people had even tried to get a hold of Apollo or someone else to try and get accurate information or just to try and stop this whole situation from happening. I think overall, this was just a bad situation to look at and be a part of. This is a little biased because I only went over one part of the story, but you're welcome to try and research it yourself if you feel like it. Tommy C versus Twizfizz. Yeah, Tommy C and Twizfizz, and they be cringing. Eh, I don't really care, so let's just move on. George Floyd Gaming. God, the fucking name is hilarious. George Floyd Gaming was a fake gaming channel mocking George Floyd's death. The profile picture of the channel was just a stock image of George Floyd with headphones, but I'm not really sure what type of content he uploaded to the channel. I'm not really sure what type of content he uploaded to the channel, but I'm pretty sure it was either just shit mocking his death, or random streams with his friends that he had in a call. In the streams, there was a virtual cam in the bottom left corner with Floyd's face as the model. Huh, let's see, I've been getting a lot of people telling me to react to the- OH MY GOD! No way, he's not gonna fucking do it, man. He's not gonna fucking- He's not gonna- <laughs> Even though his channel has been terminated, you can still easily find archives of his content, if that's genuinely what you enjoy. You can even find them on YouTube if you look hard enough. This is usually the part where I would make a joke about the topic, but I think it would look very bad on my part. Nick versus John Swan. I couldn't really find much on the topic, but according to at GooseGary2 on Twitter, the situation was about Chris Hansen liking A Star's dad's page and A Star's Twitter thread about Chris Hansen. Keeping in mind that I'm not really sure if that's actually what it was about. <laughs> Oh my god, what? what? Don't blame me, blame this fucker instead. Solid Shibe. Solid Shibe is a YouTube channel with over 30,000 subscribers. His YouTube channel mainly focused around making GTA 5 machinima content while occasionally making other videos such as a video called Omina, which is just him and his friend fucking around in his apartment. But it turns out Solid Shibe was actually gone for four years because of his now ex-girlfriend had made some accusations against him. Reading this sentence right from the beginning for people who don't know the proper context could come to the conclusion that I cost what she describes as one of her most vulnerable moments. And for the people that still might not be familiar with him, he was the one that Leafy scammed along with Nick Cash. Raintism. Raintism is a commentary channel that is well known for faking cardiac arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Over time, multiple people have made videos on Raintism calling him out for not only faking cardiac arrest, but also many other situations. Personally, I have been in VCs with Raintism, and as far as I'm concerned, he's a pretty cool guy. He's not a bad person to talk to, and sometimes when he's not talking about the newest person he hates, you can actually have a genuine conversation with him. Who is Common Cop? Common Cop is a Twitter account that is an obvious parody of the well-known series Content Cop created by iDubs TV. Common Cop frequently interacts with members of the commentary community and is quite in touch with recent drama that goes inside the community. It'll post anything from satire to upright parodying or just making jokes about the commentary community. Although I'm not really sure who runs the Twitter account, my best guess would be that it's one of the bigger YouTubers in the community or maybe I'm completely wrong and it's just its own entity. Who really knows? Keemstar is always right. Once again, I couldn't really find anything on this besides Skipper saying that he made a tweet mocking John Swan after he lied. I know this part was a bit short and lazy and I'm sorry for that, so here's a clip of me reacting to a Family Guy episode. Okay, so I'm getting told now to react to this uh, Family Guy episode. No, it's gonna hit the car. He's gonna hit it. Oh my God! Black's Destiny Debate. On April 26th, 2020, a YouTuber by the name of Destiny with 343k subscribers streamed a debate with the YouTuber Bo Blacks. Bo Blacks said that Destiny reacted to a tweet where he was quote tweeting a clip from Memology where he called one of his viewers an inbred dipshit fuckhead for saying that you need a computer and home internet to watch to watch Twitch. After Bo Blacks was finished talking, Destiny responded with quote, I call my viewers all sorts of shit. He said that he said that I think it's safe to assume 
assume that people that watch streams on Twitch all day are probably doing better socioeconomically than the average American is. The debate was all about Destiny calling one of his viewers an inbred dipshit fuckhead. By the way, if any of you feel like watching it, the stream is called You Give the Benefit of the Doubt to Your Friends, Destiny Debates Bow Blacks. If you want to watch or listen to the entire thing, live sub counts banned to stop cancel culture. For the people that don't remember what happened to live sub counts, YouTube basically removed all of them because of what happened to James Charles and that whole situation. A lot of people were upset about this, including me. There were a lot of channels that completely relied on sub counts in order to entertain their audience, but this movement came in waves. First, it was the bigger channels who were rounded down first, then it was the semi-big channels, the medium channels, then eventually the small channels with 1k subs or more. I'm pretty sure this movement didn't really affect me much because I only have 350 subs. This is the part where I feel bad for me and, you know subscribe. Xandrophal infiltration. Yeah, let's not talk about this one because it can honestly piss a lot of people off. And finally, for their last one, Krasif's phone. The situation was about a YouTuber named Krasif whose mom took his phone away. Oh fuck, I still find this situation pretty funny to be honest. But that's basically it for my part. I would like to thank Skipper for letting me on the channel and, you know, just go check out some of my stuff. Um, fuck off now. Uh, bye. Chain smoke I choke. Have a good heart but bad health You would never know Where can you turn at the end of a road Let myself Hello everyone, yes I make videos and yes my name is Alfie But all of that is irrelevant you're here for fun facts about the commentary community. You're either here because you're part of the community, or because this is another fucking iceberg video. Seriously, they never end. Will they ever end? Please. But let's cut the crap and get into the seventh layer of this godforsaken iceberg. Keem 2024. From what I could find regarding Keem 2024, is a couple tweets made from July of 2020 to late August. In these tweets, the gnome jokes about possibly running for president in the 2024 elections. These jokes were accompanied by this picture. This- this fucking picture. But yeah, as far as I can tell, Keem was just joking when it came to this, but on the other hand we have the man with the most volatile ego on the planet, so who fucking knows? Mr. Toxics Mr. Toxics is infamous in the smaller commentary community for being a complete degenerate, and saying things that I can't really include here for the sake of Skipper's monetization. He was also known for leaking DMs between Pyman and I'm Malik Stan 69 which caused a whole other controversy which I don't particularly feel like getting into right now. But yeah, Mr. Toxics is a terrible person for a number of reasons, but he's only 14 years old and I hope he grows up to be more mature than he is right now. Idubs his real name. Idubs' real name is Ian Carter. I honestly have no idea why it's so far down on the iceberg, but okay, I guess. Personally, I've known Idubs' name was Ian since around 2017, but I guess some people might not have known. The 2016 commentary is being purged. I was actually thinking of making a video about this on my main channel, so I'll try to keep it brief. In 2016, YouTube was a very different place. Leafy and Keemstar were running rampant, and Idubs was supposedly ending people's careers. All of that changed when Leafy left, and demonetization hit everyone like Logan Paul in that one boxing match. Lol, well, get it? Because KSI and Logan Paul? Haha. <laughs> Over the last year and a half, 2016 commentary has been erased. This started with people like Filthy Frank, then iDub's content cop on Leafy, and then Leafy's ban in mid-2020. It's honestly quite sad to see the content that I grew up with getting erased off the platform, but I can't really do anything about it. Pescator Sewing Circle. Honestly, I couldn't find anything on this other than this video by Tommy C. A victimizer, m Shut the f up! They held it up today no, no. for insensible regulations! Tommy, Tommy. You still live with your parents? I'm 16. Yeah, exactly. Get the f out of here. That, that was extremely disrespectful. Oh, how you! Is that disrespectful? This is shot for the point! I, I'm just completely fucking lost for words. Commentary helped Morgs. Yay, another obvious one. Commentary clearly helped Morgs get where he is, but he also got that on his own, and not everything stems down to people like Pyro and Mimulus. He obviously got somewhere on his own, but commentators definitely helped as well. Exposed videos are coordinated. When it comes to exposed videos in the commentary community, it's almost a prerequisite that the drama slash exposed videos are coordinated or staged. This comes down to people falsifying drama for views and money. Because, well, who doesn't love a bit of money? That's not to say all exposed videos are staged. Nearly a year ago, I made my own exposed video where I called someone a cocksucker. So, bruh. We all know him. We all think he's a bitch. We all think he's a massive cunt. We all think 
he's a bit of a cocksucker. Anyways, the point I'm trying to prove is that although a mass majority of exposed videos on YouTube are coordinated, some aren't. Just take everything with a grain of salt. Twitter equivalent exchange. I'm not lying when I say I have absolutely no clue what this is about. I spoke to a couple other people in the community, and the only thing we could come up with is that this could possibly be referring to when Swan dipped out of the public eye and deactivated his Twitter, and Turkey Tom came back within a matter of days of that happening, but honestly I have no fucking clue. Small commentary group chat grooming. I looked, I tried to find anything I could, and guess what? Nothing. Fucking nothing. I actually thought, although dark, this could actually be pretty interesting, but no. If anyone has any idea of what this is, please leave it in the comments and I'm sure Skipper will let me know. Colossal is crazy true age. This is a weird one. Colossal is crazy should need no introduction, so I'm gonna keep it straight. In his video on Line Maker that came out 5 years ago, he claims to be 26 at the time of recording, making him 31 now. But if you do a simple Google search, you'll find that he is 36, apparently. I doubt Corsal would lie about his age in a video about grooming allegations, so I'm gonna take his word for it and not YouTubeFandom.com. Fuck off. Trubulous. Trobulous. Fuck. I, I don't know. I honestly couldn't find anything on this research wise. I have no recollection of what this is, so if anyone could please leave a comment down below and tell me and Skipper what the fuck Trobulous is. The truth about small commentary. I think this is in reference to videos made by It's Bonet by the name of The Truth About the Small Commentary Community, but I genuinely don't know for certain. Major Minor Podcast The Major Minor Podcast was a podcast run by popular creators Turkey Tom, Willie Mac Show, and Wavy Websurf. From what I know of this podcast, Turkey Tom rarely ever showed up for recordings, and they used to use sound bites from other episodes of the podcast to make it seem like he was there. I don't really know anything else about this, so I'll just keep it brief. And yes, that's it. You can all go home now because I, Alfie Makes Videos, has said all that was needed to be said. No, but in all seriousness, thanks to Skipper for giving me the opportunity to be on this video. And if you feel like subscribing to me, please consider doing so. I'll have more content coming out soon, which I'm really excited for. But other than that, thanks Skipper, and um, audio jungle. Hey, I'm Elucid, here to take on Layer 8 for my friend Skipper. I don't typically do iceberg videos or anything, so this will be a first for me. And uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Starting off in this layer of the iceberg, we have Morgs new about the pyro allegations. Morgs is a creator who has amassed a following making kids content on YouTube and is usually critically under fire due to his content being cringy and people just make videos on him all the time and criticize the stuff he does. One of these things being Morgs Fest. On the 1st of September 2019, Morgs decided to host his own event creatively named Morgs Fest. If you were another content creator, it was typically hard for you to get in, and I don't know why this was, or why it was the case at all, but content creators like Pyrocynical, Willany, and many more just weren't allowed in. After being asked in a Cold Ones interview, Pyrocynical describes his experience at Morgs Fest and why he wasn't let in. He himself didn't even really know, maybe Morgs was embarrassed or scared of these other creators stealing the limelight at his event, or maybe he just knew about the pyro allegations and that's why he decided to not let pyro in in the first place. I assume this is all just a theory and nothing else, but the only person who would truly know why he wasn't let in is Morgs himself. Bofi Frank videos getting claimed. Little is known to why some of the videos on the Filthy Frank TV channel were being taken down. However, there's a full video by Turkey Tom discussing why some of the past is being erased, which explains it well enough. But for a short summary, Joji has had a lot of edgy humor in his past persona known as Filthy Frank, and his entire character was just set out to be the entire embodiment of what a person should not be. Now, I'm positive the reason the videos are getting claimed are primarily due to the fact that back when he was Frank, some of the stuff he did does not want to be known to this day, by his network, talent agency, or even by him, due to some of the content he made being too edgy for some of the sensitive people today. If a lot of the people who are just around today on the internet, they would not like it, they would be very sensitive, due to the people who were there on the internet back then. And not only that, but considering his music is becoming more mainstream today, at least in today's light, obviously they want to keep his image clean, and I'm pretty sure he would want to keep his image clean himself. So it's probably why on YouTube these videos are just disappearing so people can't really see them as much. Nicholas Diorio Bird Curse This is a fear that anyone in the community who has a bird persona is doomed to fall due to drama or stop uploading. Someone who stopped uploading for example is Cyrus primarily due to demotivation and well yeah I'm pretty sure it's just demotivation I haven't seen anything else but I think he has uploaded recently so but uh yeah if he has then that's pretty cool it's pretty cool that he's coming back at least. This also connects to a looped theory, uh, you know, the whole Diorio collab thing. It connects to a looped theory where if they also collaborate with Nicholas Diorio, they're also doomed to fall, such as John Swan due to the dream drama or Turkey Tom previously due to the pyro allegations. This is a interesting theory, but uh, honestly, I, I however, feel like it just has a ton of holes in it and it doesn't seem fully 
accurate at all. It's obviously just a whole theory and it's not anything more than that. Commentary videos made 10 years ago. This is an interesting one to me at least because it just brings up that there were a decent amount of commentary videos that were made 10 years ago that have been just swept underneath the rug. Even the rant era back in 2008 from creators back in the day was commentary. Commentary itself has had an unknown origin at least on the platform. I mean, it wasn't really popularized until later on by a few creators who were looked at as the pioneers of the genre for the whole community. Even Ray William Johnson from Equals 3 back in the day was commentary, if you want to go that far. It's primarily just speaking into a mic, giving your opinion, and really just expressing it about a topic. If you feel the need to talk about a topic and you want to make a video on it, then go ahead. It's That's really what commentary is. Commentary is just talking about a topic and something you enjoy, and that's the end of it. I can't really find any really old videos back then. I mean, the only thing I can really think of is Equals 3 from back then, you know, by Ray William Johnson, but that's primarily it. And I can't really think of any rant videos back then because, well, to be fair, I wasn't really watching YouTube that much 10 years ago when I was younger. I mean, I don't know if any videos that are, you know, from back then 10 years ago at least. If you guys know any, just uh, leave some in the comments below or your opinions on this topic. All commentary will be banned by 2023. This is the idea that censorship will inevitably kill commentary by 2023. YouTube is a platform that is not really like the commentary community since it first began, primarily due to the fact that commentary is focused on drama and delivering the news. Drama equals views and views equal money, but the reason YouTube doesn't want commentary on the platform is because of the drama and issues it causes, such as people leaving the platform or harassment in general. And when things get out of hand because of people's opinions and people opposing those opinions, it leads to censorship and people being wiped off the platform entirely. For example, them banning Leafy off the platform was like them spreading a message or an example of what could happen to others in the community. If they don't stay in line, they could get eventually wiped off of the entire platform. It doesn't matter what form of commentary channel you are, you can't just blink an eye and act like Leafy, for example, wasn't a pioneer to commentary on YouTube. So it could really affect anybody at any given time. The Minecraft sex mod is real. Okay, this one's gonna be kind of funny. <laughs> the Minecraft sex mod was introduced to the community through the Dream Drama, where John Swan and Lieutenant Cobra made a fake account pretending to be Dream just to do a little trolling. Cobra was pretending he was Dream through Discord messages where he later told Harley TBS that the Minecraft sex mod was real. However, I'm gonna be honest, I guess we'll never find out if it's real or not, but it was one of the biggest trolls I've ever seen in the community, so good job to Lieutenant Cobra for that, considering the joke went on for a good year. A good year or something since, you know, Dream, it was before Dream blew up. And I guess we'll have to wait and figure out if the Minecraft sex mod is real. I mean, y you never fucking know. All commentators are the same person. This states that all people primarily in the commentary community think mostly alike and follow each other like sheep as one whole person altogether. I can somewhat see this in some sense to the amount of people who blindly agree on certain dramas that go on throughout the timeline of unfortunate events that have happened so far. However, it's it's clearly just more of an idea because when you look at certain drama scenarios, you have people who flip-flop back and forth such as when the pyro allegations are being spread around. And when it comes to something as serious as allegations or anything as serious as that, you can easily see how people appeal to the certain side just to look like they were on the good side of the drama. Essentially making them all look like one person as a whole because most of them agree while others may do more research and see that they were wrong. This goes to show that you should do your research before you blindly just push an allegation. You should always double check things before you do it. And in all honesty, I've never understood why people just honestly just jump the gun on things like that. It's just weird. I, I don't get it. Now, I'm pretty sure you're obviously not brain dead enough to think that all commentators are the same person because obviously they're all not all the same person. They all have their own channels or are all separate people. But that's obviously a brain dead common. I mean, if you really think about it, it just looks like it kind of sometimes when you have people blindly agree with the same thing without actually looking into it. Now that being said, thank you Dr. Skipper for letting me take on this layer of the iceberg. Really cool of you man. And uh, yeah, don't forget to sub to Skipper. And if you are interested in any of my content, make sure to go check it out. That being said, Elucid's a name and watching anime and sleeping all day is a game. All right, folks, the last letter of this iceberg is mostly just memes and this video has gone on too long, so I'll outro this project. And I appreciate all you guys for watching them. It's awesome. But the real heroes are the people in this video. Beaks Lair 2 had above and beyond efforts to so go check him out. He's close to 20k. Also check out Kamai. He has 400 subscribers and put a lot of effort into this project as well. Dr. Demonic went hard in the paint with this, so also check him out. The hole in my garden is close to 1,000 subs, so get him over that hurdle. It'd be appreciated. Alibi has only 300 subs, which is criminal. So please check him out. Also check out Alfie Mix videos. He's close to 1k as well. So hopefully this pushes him over the hurdle. And of course check out Elucid. His videos are great and he's also close to 20k. They're all down in the description. And this video 
video wouldn't have been able to be done without them. Once again, making this video has been awesome. And the best way you could show support to the creators in this video is by sharing this video. Everybody deserves recognition in here. Also, if you want to subscribe to me for future projects like this, that would also help. I'm not going to plug myself too much because at the end of the day, the whole point of this video is for the people in the video. They deserve way more than I do. So make sure to show them love instead of me. Of course, you know, a little love would be kind of nice, you know, or a little subscribe, but for real though, check them out first. And with that, I've been Dr. Skipper and well, I'll see you soon. I chain smoke, I choke, have a good heart.